This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Netflix. Coming up on Destructoid, PS3 users are getting the shaft, Assassin's Creed Revelations is getting some DLC, and Jonathan Holmes joins us for a sexy Skyward Sword review. All that and more heading your way on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Bitch and shirt! Max, yeah, I forgot right? your name for a second. It happens. It's hard. To, it's easy to get distracted <laughs> um, by this great shirt. That the was rainbow. Um, it's yeah. distracting. Level Up Studios. They sent us this this mug and this shirt. And the, I know. They have other things. It's you a should good go check thing that I out. wore my Boba Fett shirt today. Yeah. That would have been embarrassing, right? Yeah, because you don't know who Boba Fett is, do you? There's some gold in there. <sighs> anyway. For sure. Let's um let's let's move on. We have a really great review from Jonathan Holmes oh, for Zelda mm -hmm. Skyward Sword. We're gonna have that after the break, but in the meantime. There's, I guess, some other stuff to talk about yeah, a little news. bit, kind of. No big deal. Uh, the big thing that's happening right now is Skyrim. That's all that anyone on my Twitter feed is talking about, and it's completely taken over Reddit, and I've been fighting with my girlfriend about who gets to play. And that being said, I could not be happier with it. I love Skyrim. It's, it's really fun. It's wonderful. Uh, Bethesda seems happy with it, too. They announced some of the sales figures, and it sounds like it did okay. The company announced that more than 50% of launch units were sold in the first 48 hours, and Bethesda Softworks has been receiving large reorders from major retailers in North America and across Europe and Australia. Now, considering that Bethesda shipped around 7 million units, that should account for about 3.5 million copies sold, which really isn't Not that bad at bad all. At all. Nope. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, Skyrim set a record on Steam with apparently around 230,000 concurrent users in the first 24 hours, which is a lot of friggin' people to be playing a game. Um, I feel really bad for anybody who isn't interested in Skyrim, uh, or hearing about Skyrim, or talking about Skyrim, because it probably really sucks to be you right mm -hmm. now, because that's all we're talking mm -hmm. about! That's all um, I care about. Now, the rest of you guys, are you interested in us doing some more Skyrim gameplay videos, like tips and tricks? I think Tara's actually been paying attention and trying to learn new things. I ordered the strategy guide off Amazon, so I'm gonna take a look at it, and I'm gonna do, like, a Skyrim tips video, and yeah. hope to get that up sometime I figured soon. out if you hold down A, you can pick up an object, like a basket, and put it on mm -hmm. someone's head. That's you can also helpful. punch a horse in the ass. It's funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let us know. If you want to see more of our videos, we will try and do that. Um, so That's there's exciting. that. That's exciting. Yeah. Catching up to Call of Duty, right? Yep. Well, we're like halfway there, I yep. guess. Um, anyway, mark this down as the second time PS3 users have gotten the shaft this year. Or should I say, haven't gotten the shaft. If you recall the three foot long purple dildo bat you see proudly displayed on our set, where is uh, it? I put Where'd it over it there because it was probably oh, scaring well, off people. Well, it's around here somewhere. Um, apparently that was promised by THQ to be featured in an exclusive gameplay mode for Saints Row 3, available only to those who bought the game on PS3. That was announced back in June at E3, and now five months later, immediately after the game's launch, it's nowhere to be found. The Xbox and PS3 versions of the game are virtually identical. Strangely enough, less than a month ago we reported that EA had done something similar when they promised to include a full retail copy of Battlefield 1943 and every PS3 copy of Battlefield 3. Needless to say, that didn't happen, and then EA tried to make up for it by giving PS3 owners early access to the game's DLC. Not free access, mm. just early access for something that they would otherwise have to pay for, which is a little ridiculous. However, THQ hasn't commented on the dildo bat fiasco yet, but here's hoping they offer a little something more for their fans than EA did, like perhaps a real life-sized dildo bat replica? Yeah, that, that couldn't cost them a fortune or anything. No, well. No. Hey, that thing is, I'm pretty sure that costs a lot of money to make. It's, According it's to a, Jim's review of the dildo, it MSRP'd for $625. I think Jim made that up completely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, like we said, news today is a little bit slim. Um, you know how video games have been a thing that people make consoles for for like 30 years now? They keep making them, they make like so. a Nintendo, they make it. like a Sega, they make like another Nintendo, and they do that like every, you know, every few years, every six or seven or whatever. Um, well, guess what? That's continuing to be a trend. Uh, Edge Magazine reports that Ubisoft Montreal is currently developing software for Target boxes. These are PCs that are created with the next Xbox Target specs in mind, made using off-the-shelf components and, uh, you know, just trying to reach that goal. It's also reported that other studios, including EA, are also using this equipment and that Microsoft will be sending out genuine next-gen Xbox dev kits before Christmas. Now, what does this mean for all of us? It means that in about a year's time, we might be lining up to buy the new Xbox. The Z-Box, perhaps, or maybe the X-Bag. Who knows? But the next thing, the 720, whatever they're going to call it, um, that's in the works. 
Big surprise. Edge also reports that some Sony studios are allegedly working on the next gen Sony hardware too. Mm. Um, this really shouldn't be a surprise to anybody because this is how companies work. Um, you know, they make stuff and so people buy it. And then, yeah. you know, if this comes as any surprise to you guys, if, if this news is, is like baffling you at all, um, you should be really careful because you're just dumb. In fact, you send me all your money for safekeeping because really it's entirely possible that someone might steal it because there are crooks out there. So please contact me. I will take care of your money for you. Maybe by the time this next gen console comes out, we'll be famous enough to there to where we won't even have to buy one ourselves. We'll just get it in the mail. That'd be so cool. Do you think that would happen? God, that would be cool. Yeah, that'd be nice. All right, Free more shit. news. Uh, Assassin's Creed came out yesterday, and to coincide with the game's release, we've got some undoubtedly premature info on its per first piece of planned DLC. The Ancestors Characters Pack will add four new playable characters to the multiplayer roster, including the swashbuckling privateer, the sexy corsair, the mischievous brigand, and the noble gladiator. Each character comes with its own set of weapons, taunts, and special, special assassination moves, can't speak today, that I am sure more than necessitate its $3.99 price point, 320 Microsoft points if you're on Xbox. So watch out for that on December 13th. We're going to take a quick second to thank our sponsor, and then we'll be back with a special surprise. That's not really a surprise since we talked about it already, but still, get excited. Max, tell them about Netflix. Okay. So being in the future is awesome because we have talking cars and video phones, but most importantly, we have Netflix. With Netflix, you can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streaming directly to your PC, Mac, or straight to your TV with your PS3, Xbox 360, or Nintendo Wii console. And I'm bet willing to bet that most of you guys own at least one of those. Now, best of all, you lovely Destructoid show viewers can get a free trial membership by going to netflix.com slash destructoid and signing up right now. When you use this URL, it helps support our show and it allows you to watch Robocop right Right now, so it's really a win-win situation. Again, that's netflix.com slash destructoid. So we've got a real treat for you guys today. Everyone's favorite, lovable, huggable, soft-skinned, multi-ethnic teddy bear slash former co-host of the Destructoid show, Jonathan Holmes, sent over, sent over a video review of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which he recently reviewed for destructoid.com. Let's have a listen. Hey everybody, Jonathan Holmes here from Destructoid.com, back again to give you a special review of Skyward Sword. There may be a few spoilers in this, I haven't really planned what I'm going to say, but if spoilers come out, I apologize, let me know ahead of time. So, Skyward Sword is the latest game in the Zelda series for the, the Wii, Nintendo Wii, it's one of the last big Wii games coming out. It celebrates the 25th anniversary of Zelda, so it's a big, important game, some are saying. Uh, it even comes with a CD that has the best of Zelda music played by a full orchestra. And that really kind of sums up what Skyward Sword is going for. It's trying to take the best of the Zelda series in general, hone it, cut out the crap, and take the best of it and really accentuate the best qualities of the whole series to, to make the best Zelda game ever made, which this may be, depending on your taste. Now, the game itself is atypical in a lot of ways from the Zelda series because Zelda and Link, storyline-wise, Zelda and Link already know each other and they are on the cusp of making out and then Zelda gets kidnapped by a giant mist shark that flies in the air and has no eyes. I won't give too much away about the story, but let's just say it's not your typical Ganon is bad, let's go kill him storyline. A lot more detailed and three-dimensional than that. Characters are really interesting in this game. And funny. This game is funny and fun. There's a whimsy to it that you're not going to get in a lot of other games these days. I can't think of another game that was willing to take a fairly serious storyline and on top of that give you a place called the Lumpy Pumpkin where you go to hang out and break chandeliers and deliver pumpkin soup. You also meet a monster who lives in the basement and he wants you to find gratitude from the people. Gratitude, of course comes out of people's bodies in this game in the form of weird shiny globs you take that gratitude and you give it to the monster and he's going to turn into a human being later there's a lot of weird subplots like that to keep the game light to offset the heaviness of the the main story the game uses motion plus it's a motion plus exclusive so a lot of motion controls in this game i know that's going to turn a lot of you off sadly even though this is the best use of uh, motion control I've used in a game. It actually feels natural and makes the game more interesting and more fun. It's challenging at first though, when you're not used to actually moving your body when you're playing a game, 
you're not going to be instantly good at it the way you would using controls that you're accustomed to with buttons. But once you get the hang of it, I'd say I was probably an hour or two in before the combat came completely naturally without me having to think about it. And I was actually more coordinated for it, and I felt like a more badass person for physically being the one cutting guys in half this way or that way, depending on my mood. The pace of the game is also really different because it's non-stop. This is concentrated Zelda juice. This isn't diluted like past Zelda games you might have played, like... As much as I like the game Twilight Princess and also Ocarina of Time, you're spending a lot of time in those games just walking around. Uh, taking in the atmosphere, maybe, but also just kind of wasting time. There's a lot of filler in those games. Not so much in Skyward Sword. You spend most of the time getting to the dungeons and then uh, playing through the dungeons. And both of those uh, aspects of the game are very similar now. There's a lot of puzzles both in the path to the dungeons and uh, puzzles in the dungeons. You get items in both areas now. It's pretty much non-stop item acquiring, item mastering, puzzle solving, combat, with more new features added that I could even start to list. There's wall jumping, there's run button, there's bug catching, there's hitting a cat in the face with a sword over and over again, there's time travel, there's pirate shipping, there's so much stuff in this game I can't even begin to list it. I'm tempted to give Skyward Sword a perfect 10, because it is my favorite game in the series thus far, at least the 3D Zeldas. And I can't think of anything in terms of craftsmanship that they could have done any better. It's pretty much perfectly crafted. However, I know that a lot of you out there are going to have a hard time adjusting to the motion controls if you're just a motion control hater. And this game will change your mind, but only if you're willing to put a couple hours into it. So, that said, Nintendo probably should have given the option to play without motion controls, which they could have. It could have very well worked with dual analog. So without that, I'm going to have to dock it a little bit of score and uh, give it a 9.5. So 9.5 out of 10, Skyward Sword, play it. Jonathan Holmes, Jonathan Holmes! Will you please come back and host the Destructoid show with me? Max is too tall and his hair gel makes the bathroom smell. It's not my gel, it's my musk. It attracts the consorts. It's different. It's more musk. But anyway, uh, Holmesy, thank you so much for sending that in. I, I love you, I miss your musk. Uh, you can go read Jonathan Holmes' full review over at destructoid.com where he uses words to voice his opinion. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, last episode we showed off this bitchin' gunstringer marionette maquette Get based on the here. Twisted Pixel game. Um, and we are giving it away. It could be yours. Um, these things are pretty cool. Uh, they uh, it's they sell for hundred bucks, and they are in very limited limited supply because they are limited edition. Oh god, don't break it! Shut up, Tara. Let me Touch play it. with it. Um, but yeah, all we want you to do to win this contest is you have to make us as puppets. Um, and this can be done in a, a variety of ways. You can draw a picture, you can make some actual puppets and then take a photo of them, or you can actually record a video puppet show. Um, and we are honestly, we are very equal opportunity puppet judges. Mm -hmm. So whatever you like, if it's sock puppets or finger puppets or marionettes or paper mache things or um, a piñata, whatever it is, just make a you know, make the, the puppets for us. It could be popsicle sticks with googly eyes. But do that and then email it to detoidshowcontest at destructoid.com. And that's by next Tuesday night at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. That's November 22nd, 2011, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and if you're gonna go the extra mile and make a puppet show video, do not email us the video. Instead, upload it to YouTube and post it as a video response to this episode. And please try and keep it under 30 seconds. But that's it, that's what you have to do. Make a puppet show of some, uh, puppets of some sort, and then oh, you can win puppets. this little guy and we will send him to you. Unfortunately, yeah. this is US only once again. Um, we are going to have an awesome code giveaway on Friday's live show that I hope will be open to everyone everywhere. Isn't that right, my pet? Don't stroke the pinata. I love this nice. pinata. Okay. Well, that's all for our show today. I want to thank each and every one of you for sharing and growing with us today. It's been a moment of our time to together. Well said. Thank you. You can check us out on Twitter at Detroit Show. I am Tara Longest, and he is Max Scoville. Like Max said, we're going to be back here on Friday for our weekly live show. That is at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 6.30 Eastern, and 11.30 p.m. GMT, because people never seem to know when that is. The address for that is youtube.com slash detoid, and hopefully we'll see you there. Get those contest entries in, you bye guys. Bye-bye. Good night. I could be yours.